We all know that golf swing takes a lot of work. There's a lot of repetition that's needed in order to master any new movement pattern. That's just the way the brain learns. But to what we're going to talk about today can actually make an instant impact on your ball striking. That doesn't mean you're going to go out and do it perfectly every time. That's where the repetition comes in and the practice. But what you are going to find is that for once you're going to start to really understand what controls uh, the ball flight. And when we talk about about ball flight, there are a couple things that we're specifically dealing with. One is trajectory. And the better golfer you become, the more important trajectory becomes in, in being able to score in all conditions consistently. And so trajectory is a huge piece that is important to me, especially with the professional golfers that I work with, especially being in Florida where it's windy a lot. If you're in an area that's very windy, you're going to want to pay very close attention to this video. The second thing is just directional control. And for those of you who've read the instructor's manual for level one, we've talked a little bit about the right hand versus the left hand and how those things work. And today that's what we're going to talk about specifically is what the left hand does in the golf swing, how the bones and joints and muscles need to be in alignment for control and for power. And specifically when we're dealing with the left hand, there's a couple areas that we're going to focus on. One, we're going to focus on the back of the hand or the wrist. And two, we're going to focus on the elbow. And we know it address we're trying to keep everything in neutral so there's uh, you know, minimal chances for injury. We're connected to our power source, our core, and those things. At impact, those positions change because we don't want impact and address to be the same because we're trying to generate power and stability and control at impact. And so some of those things are going to change versus where they were at address. So if, you look, if you've looked at some of the videos I've done, like on Tiger Woods Dynamics on YouTube, the um, you know, video has been seen a million times where people have looked at the positions that he's at address and at impact are very, very different. And that, that's how they should be. That's just the way that the dynamics of the golf swing work. So when we talk about the left arm and specifically in the downswing, which is what we're going to focus on today, it has a very, very important specific role to do. One, its primary role, the back of the left hand, the wrist, this whole area of your arm, is predominantly controlling club face through the hitting area. It does it on the backswing as well as we have some rotation in that arm. But as we get into impact, where this guy is facing, if we have a good grip, is going to really help you track where the club face is pointing. It's a simple measurement. So you know that if you have a proper grip and that left hand is in a good position at impact where it's nice and flat and it's pointing directly at the target line, down the target line, then the club face should be pointing there as well. If it's pointing out this way, the club face is open. If it's pointing this way, the club face is, of course, closed. So when we're dealing with that, we also want to look at the left elbow because the, this is an area where I see particularly the more inconsistent golfers. It doesn't mean they don't have a phenomenal golf swing. You can have a great golf swing and people walk up to you all the time on the range and they watch you hit balls, but you're spraying it all over the place and you don't know why. A lot of it has to do with your elbow because of the fact that what a lot of golfers do is that as they're coming down into impact, particularly if they get stuck on the way down, this arm is externally rotating very quickly through the hitting area. So you can see if I just rotate my arm, so right now it's internally rotated, so I've got to twist it in. And then if I just spin it really fast, what's happening to my hand? Well, it's turning really fast. And now if I put a golf club in there, so you can see right now the club face would be square. If I back up just a little bit, and now as I turn it, it's wide open. And then as I rotate it again, it's shut. So now I'm trying to time this movement through the hitting area. Not very desirable because at the same point that this guy's rotating, the wrist can rotate independently. So now I'm not rotating my arm at all, but now I'm spinning the club face all over the place. So I can have all of these great positions going back. And if I'm trying to time this rotating at thousands of degrees per second through the hitting area, I'm never going to do that consistently. So that's why this video is so incredibly important because what we're going to do is give you drills on how to get that in the right position at impact so you're consistent on every golf shot. So, and let's talk about what that looks like. So as we're going back at the top of the swing, your shoulders are down and in, everything's still maintained. Obviously this is going to come out of the box a little bit. And when that happens, the left shoulder comes out of the box a little bit. The arm rotates just a little bit. This is an important part of the swing because if I didn't do that, if I just kept that arm in neutral, the club shaft would be vertical. I'd have a really steep swing plane. And then as I went to the top, I'd be really, really steep. So all we need to do is as we're going back, that left arm rotates a little bit, and now I'm on plane. So that arm has basically rotated from 
just outside of neutral. It's slightly internally rotated and then as it goes back, it rotates about 50, 60, 70 degrees. Just depends on the swing and the build. But as we get to the top, now my arm is in this position versus neutral. So as it's rotated, I don't want to start to spin that down because look what happens to my golf club. So now I'm just externally rotating my wrist and my arm and now the club face is out of position. What we do want to do is actually the opposite. It slightly increases on the way down. This is a minimal amount. This is not something that you're going to go and work on in your swing. So I'm just kind of giving you the nuts and bolts of what's actually happening. This is not something that you probably have to work on at any point in your golf swing unless you're trying to, unless you have a specific issue with it. But what happens is as that arms internally rotate a little bit, if I just started coming down, specifically with the shoulders, I'm going to come over the top. But if I let that arm rotate just a little bit, and again, this is just a few degrees from here, as I start everything back down, notice how the shaft has a flattening appearance. And I'm exaggerating this. Again, it's, a, it's more than what's actually happening. But as I do that, the shaft starts to come down, back down on plane instead of the opposite, which would be over the plane. So we don't want that, obviously. So the point of this is that as this internally rotates a little bit more, as I come down into impact, notice where my elbow is pointing. So I'm going to put a shaft here. It's pointing right down the line. That allows me now to control the amount of rotation that's happening in the swing because the club face is rotating shut through the hitting area. It has to. As that's happening, the movement's coming from here instead of from my arm. So now instead of having two pivot points where the shoulders spin, or the arm's spinning in the shoulder socket and the wrist is spinning, we've eliminated one. And now what that does is that elbow gives us a reference point because it's going to be pointing almost down the target line. It will be slightly internally rotated, but we just use 90 degrees as a reference. In other words, this is zero where it's pointing straight out. If I turn it 90 degrees, now my elbow is pointing down the target line. So now as I come into impact, and that's why I have this impact bag here, as I come into impact, I can check that my elbow is pointing down the line and now my wrist is flat. So now instead of trying to time all this flippy rotational motion coming from two different places, I'm only doing it at the wrist. And so now that takes the focus off of this guy. So we've eliminated one variable in the swing and now we just have this guy. And this is a very important part to train as you're learning to control impact. And this is how we typically do it. So as you go to the top of the swing, what I would want you to do is take, put the golf club down and just use your left arm. Get it into a position that as you come into impact, the left elbow is pointing down the target line and start rotating your wrist into impact. Now, this is not something where you're keeping it wide open and at the last second trying to flip your hands over. This rotation is actually happening almost from the top of the downswing because you, you don't want to be trying to time an early rotation. You want to be starting to rotate it shut or back to square early. So now as I come down, the club face is squaring early looking at the ball already and then as I come down, it's minimal rotation. If I kept it wide open, so now I'm going to take this arm or this wrist and leave it open. Now I've got the club face wide open and now I've got to really flip my hands over at the last second. That's no good. We want this rotating gradually throughout the whole downswing in a natural rotation so that it doesn't have something where you're just trying to flip it at the last second. That's a terrible feeling for golfers who have really good golf swings, but every single shot is just hoping to save it. And that typically has more to do with how they start down. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So without a golf club, what you want to do is you can take your right arm out of it for right now. As you go to the top, start working on keeping your shoulder shut and pulling your left arm down so that your elbow is pointing down the target line and you're rotating your wrist. So you're going to separate these two movements. You're not rotating your arm. You're rotating your wrist into impact. And you're going to do this just with your left arm. Now, why wouldn't I want to get to the top and just spin my shoulders and then fling my arm off my chest? Well, it's very simple. That feels very powerful. And in fact, your body is putting a lot of muscular effort into it. But there's two things that happen and they're detrimental to the golf swing. One is that if I go to the top and just spin my shoulders, my arms get trapped behind my body. There's no way around this. If I go to the top, my shoulder to get back to impact has only got to move about six inches. My hands have got to travel about six feet. So how am I going to match the speed of something way out away from center 
getting all the way back to impact, trying to make that catch up with something that's only got to move six inches before I'm stuck. It's not going to happen. So that's why the shoulders feel like they stay really shut at the start of the downswing and the left arm is working to help pull the swing, pull the club back down to impact and get in this nice solid braced impact position. Hogan was somebody, there's been lots of great players that have just gone to the top and unwound. Hogan was a great example of this. Hogan struggled with hooking the ball for, the, for most of his career until he built in enough compensations that he could fade it. Super weak grip, keeping the club face open at the top. All of that could have been prevented if he stopped spinning his shoulders and leaving the club and arms stuck behind his body. Simple fix, but he figured out a way to make it work and he hit millions of golf balls to ingrain it. We don't want to have to go through all that, so we want to keep things simple. So as we come down, we're not spinning our shoulders, we're pulling our arm down. This is the exaggerated motion of what it is. And this is what you're going to work on. So at first, you're just going to work on getting that impact alignment correct, where my left wrist is flat, my elbow is pointing down the target line. So now I'm working to get my arms back in front of my body. I'm not pulling my shoulders, I'm pulling my arm. Obviously the right, hands, right arm is going to be helping in this. But for right now, we're just focusing on the left and getting everything into alignment and impact. And by that, I mean that your left shoulder is right over everything else, right over stacked over your hip, your knee, and your ankle. That's into alignment. And now we've got this really solid, stable platform to release the golf club and get into a solid impact position. And the second thing that I was going to mention earlier, and when you go to the top and unwind and you get everything stuck, is that the club releases late because of the fact that it's stuck. Your arms are stuck back behind you, the club's coming into impact late. And so instead of getting into this impact position where all of your speed and energy is expended here and everything's fully released, when you're late, the club head doesn't fully release at max speed until out here. That's when all the angles finally release. Again, it's just wasted energy because your maximum speed is happening after the ball has already been sent to the target. It's a total waste of effort. So for a lot of you, this is going to feel like a lot less effort. And that's really important to understand because if you've been going to the top and just spinning and pushing as hard as you can, there's a, it's a double-edged sword. The faster you spin, the more centripetal force you create, right? That's pretty simple. The faster I turn, the more speed or more energy I've created here. Well, there's a direct correlation to that. When I spin my body really fast, my club wants to get thrown out away from me because that's the equal and opposite reaction. So I get to the top and I spin my shoulders, I cast the club, it's very typical. So for the average amateur, they go to the top, start spinning, their shoulders start working up and out of the shot, their hips are way out in front, and now the club's coming in, they've released it, and now they're just scooping through impact and they have no speed and power. That takes a lot of effort. And what's worse is, the harder you try and hit the ball, the more you're gonna try and spin, because that's what you're associating the golf swing with in terms of speed and power. The faster you spin, the more you cast it. So you. Can you end up in a position where you actually hit it shorter and higher and tend to chunk it more the harder you try and hit it. That's no fun. So this is going to feel like a lot less effort to start working your arms back down in front of your body and get into the stable position. But that's a good thing. That's what we want. It should feel like less effort. You should be working less hard to try and generate power in the swing. And that's what this drill is helping you do. So, you're going to do this drill while you're hitting balls, and there's a couple things, as I mentioned. You want to check to make sure you're in alignment, your shoulders stacked over your left leg. You don't want to be, the opposite of that would be, be way back here. Now we've got too much axis tilt, and we're going to come too much from the inside. We're going to tend to hit the ball fat and thin, and we're going to tend to launch it out to the right. You want to be stacked on top of it, so it's going to feel like, as you start down, my left shoulder, what does it look like it's doing? Does it look like it's coming up and out and spinning, or does it look like it's working down? Well, the appearance is that it's working down to the ball. If you've never compressed a golf ball properly in your life, a lot of it is typically due to golfers doing this. If you start to feel like you're on top of the ball, this is the feeling of you've heard covering the ball and having your shoulder work down, having your chest feeling like it's on top of the ball. That's what you want to feel. You don't want to feel that you're spinning your hips and unwinding everything and getting everything stuck. And so your shoulder's coming up and out of the shot. You want your shoulder to feel like, and it should look like it's working down. I'm not consciously trying to put my shoulder down. I'm shifting my weight while pulling my arm down and not spinning my shoulders. And so that's what creates that appearance. And so my shoulders are gonna be a lot more level 
compared to being very tilted if this is the appearance you have at impact. This is where a lot of golfers get into hitting a lot of big hooks because they're coming away from the inside because your spine angle is going to dictate your path into the golf club or into the ball. The more tilted you are this way, the more you're going to be coming in to out. Now for amateurs who tend to be slicers, this is going to feel different. You have to work on getting your arms in the proper position, which means not coming over it like this and spinning your arms down. We're just working on pulling our arms down. So now, once we get that, the next key is to add a, t a tool to help reinforce that feeling and stop you at impact so that you can check your impact alignments. And so we use an impact bag for that. And we used to sell tons of these on the site, and unfortunately, it became harder and harder to get them. We have new ones coming, so check the website soon. We are going to have new impact bags coming. Mine's uh, it's seen its better days, to say the very least, but I've gotten a lot of good use out of it. So, so now what we're going to do is you can choke up on the club, get into an impact alignment. You want the wrist flat, the elbow pointing about 90 degrees away from the body, so it's internally rotated about 90 degrees, and then we're starting to get into impact. And you want to make sure that this doesn't start to break down and flip and that you're not spinning your arm externally rotating it and trying to flip the club. If you're used to doing that, we've got issues. So we want to start working that out of the golf swing that we get into this position and not this position. The added benefit of this is if you've had any pain in your elbow from hitting lots of balls, and your elbow's like this, well, think about how your elbow is designed to work. Is it designed to bend this way or up and down this way? Well, obviously, it's designed to move in this one plane. So when, you're move, when your elbow is in this position and you're, the force is working across your arm this way, you're going to eventually injure your elbow this way. When it's here, now your elbow is naturally going to take all that stress off of it. So it's obviously a big difference from being from here where your elbow is now getting jacked up against inside the joint versus now if you were to hit like a tree stump or a hard piece of ground and it was really firm and your, your arm needed to stop moving, your elbow would just bend and be totally fine. So this is an added benefit of getting rid of that pain and getting into the proper alignment here, but it also is helping us control the club face. So understand that both arms have a job to do. The left arm is working down. The right arm's working down, and as we get into impact, we want to start working on hitting an impact bag, a tire, hitting balls, start checking your impact alignments with that left arm, and so that's what this drill is all about. So now as you get a little bit better with it, you start working on getting into those impact positions with your left arm only. You can hit balls like this. It's similar to the right arm only downswing drill in that it's pretty hard to do it with one arm only, but this is a great way to train it and get your left arm working correctly, but don't try to hit them far. That's not the point. The point is to get into these proper alignments. So now, instead of flipping the face through impact, you're squaring it up. And so as I mentioned, both arms have a job to do. And in the end, that's what we're going to do is combine both of them. So now, we're in a stable impact position. And so that's how the left arm works in the golf swing. So from here down into impact, we want to check Again, that the elbow is at about 90 degrees, the wrist is 90 degrees, they're nice and flat, and working into the solid strike position where everything is in alignment over the left foot. And I guarantee you, if you start, if you've always been kind of an inconsistent ball striker and you start working on this left arm only, it's going to make a huge difference in your golf swing. If you're a right-hander trying to play left-handed, it's going to be tough at first. So take your time. It's going to take reps to, in order to get comfortable with this. But as you start doing it, you're going to find, oh my gosh, I used to really flip the face and now I can actually control it and know where the ball's going. It will make a huge difference in your ball striking.